up, Crop Nation? It's your boy John here today. We're back with our final episode of footy for the year. It is the grand final. Should be a spectacular between Sydney Swans and the Brisbane Lions. First time we've seen an interstate grand final uh, at the MCG since 2006, I believe, was the last one. That was the Sydney Swans and the West Coast Eagles back then. We've got a really awesome show for you today, though. We're going to go over our favorite picks, our favorite prop bets. For this game, it should be an absolute classic. There's a ton of value. There's a ton of options to be had here. So we'll take a look at that. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe to this because that really helps us out. Leave a comment as well. Love to get some of your favorite picks as well. You can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter as well. And you can also leave a review on Apple and uh, Spotify, which is where a lot of our listeners are coming from these days, which is awesome to see as well. And also for YouTube, did you know that 60% of you who are watching this right now, you're not subscribed, really helps us out. If you like the footy, this is a great channel for you. We will be back with more footy. We'll do some off-season programming as well. I'm going to be doing some team uh, reviews and matchups and going into the 2025 season as well. But if you like the NFL, Sully and I have been doing our Sunday slate every week. It's been awesome. I've also been doing my Thursday night preview. You can go check that out. That'll be live as well pretty soon, probably by the time you're watching this as well. So be sure to check out that as well. That's between the Cowboys and the Giants this week. But without further ado, let's get into it. It is the grand final round, the finale. Let's do it. So the first thing I want to do was just take a quick little look back at how the season went for both these teams because they could not, they were not very similar at all. We know, uh, remember, the Swans came out absolutely firing in the first half of the year. They were on some insane, unsustainable record. At one point between week six and week 15, they were covering the spread every single week. They had a bye week in there, but more or less, that's nine straight games that they were covering their spread. They were doing phenomenal uh, work. Then it was interesting. So there's a time where I think like Luke Parker and Callum Mills came back from injury and a few players started to get injured. And then we start to see them start to lose some games. I think they lost like two in a row. They had that massive blowout when they went to Adelaide to play Port Adelaide and they got absolutely destroyed. But they picked it up again through the back half of the season. They weren't always covering the spread. Then they covered the spread twice from week 18 onwards to week 24. So going to be interesting to see how that goes. But then they've been pretty solid through the final series. There was that really intense game against the Giants, which they came back and won. That was great to see. They had the bye week. And then last week, they uh, were in complete control of the game against Port Adelaide, Adelaide, which I expected to be the case. Brisbane Lions, on the other hand, their season was completely different. They got out really slow at the start. They were losing all their games. You might remember very first game of the year against the Blues up in Brisbane. They got out to like a 60-point lead by halftime. The Blues slowly chipped away and came back, and they won that game. That was crushing. They went proceeded to lose a couple more games and they were sitting around the bottom half of the ladder. And then they slowly sort of started to get it together through the middle half of the season. They, uh, even though they were losing players, they were still managing to come about players like Kai Lohman, who was in contention for rising stars started to come about. Cal Archie started to play really well. Jared Berry was playing really well through the middle and uh, Hugh McCluggage, Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko were all fantastic players through them through the midfield. They'd always relied a lot on Josh Dunkley. He sort of seemed to trail off towards the end as well. Uh, they were a bit shaky at the end of the season as well. They were dropping a couple of games. They dropped that one to Collingwood. They lost by a point. But then through the final series, they had a miraculous comeback against the Giants. Uh, and then they had a miraculous win against the Cats as well. That was a bit of a bummer to see. They uh, had a huge win against the Blues. They were fairly comfortable with the qualifying final. Um, but that was a sad, sad tale that they hung on uh, to the Cats in the end. They're kicking the last two goals in the final two minutes. Um, so this is going to be an interesting game. It strikes me. So Sydney Swans, their favorite minus four and a half at this stage and the over under sitting at 170 and a half. So they're both about right. It's interesting that, the, um, that the books think that this is going to be a fairly close game, that minus four and a half. I guess that this is where it's all on the line. And I think these two teams match up really well against one another. If we take a look at the last time these two teams met, it actually wasn't that long ago. It was round 19 back in uh, late July. 
Uh, Brisbane Lions at home in, at the Gabba won by two points in the end. It was a huge, intense game. It was very back and forth at the start. Brisbane Lions are up. They're up by about four goals at quarter time. Swans completely came back halfway through the third quarter. They were in front by two goals. Brisbane Lions managed to get it out through the fourth quarter. They got back to in front and the Swans were in front. It seesawed for a little bit. And then the Lions did secure it in the end with the final two points of the game that they needed. Uh, back then, though, the Swans, they were out without Justin McInerney, Callum Mills and James Rowbottom all missed. But Isaac Heaney came back in from his suspension. Uh, Corey Warner was playing. He was a sub. Harry Cunningham as well was playing. Didn't see too much from him. Uh, they were pretty much matched up evenly in every single stat. Disposals were about even. Inside 50s, Brisbane led 56 to 48. Clearances, Brisbane were all over. And marks as well. So it's going to be interesting to see. I believe Oscar McInerney is not playing this game. I think he did, in fact, break his collarbone last week. So that's going to be interesting to see how they replace him. It might be someone like Darcy Fort who will replace him. And uh, from what I remember his time at the Cats, Darcy Fort, not always the greatest, but uh, we'll see how he goes in their place. We'll see what they uh, move around to uh, make room for him. Joe Danaher had three goals in that last game. Uh, Dane Zorka had 29 disposals and he also had 12 marks. But it was Oscar McInerney who led all players in contested possessions. He had 13 total marks for the game. So that was interesting to see as well. Uh, Dane Zorko, of course, had a huge game, 131 fantasy points as well. The other thing I want to quickly look at was just in terms of how both teams are sitting in terms of stats uh, league-wide. Uh, disposals, they're both about in the middle of the league. They're both about uh, 10th to 12th, so not too much to take away from there. But goals, this is where I guess it's all won and lost. The Swans led the league in goals. They were averaging 14.2 goals a game, 355 for the total. Uh, Cats were second, and then the Brisbane Lions were third. Brisbane Lions uh, were first in behinds as well, quite clearly too. So uh, Swans were fourth in that stat. It goes without saying, if the Brisbane Lions can put it through the middle of the sticks, through the goals, this is a game that they could potentially win, assuming that the Swans don't run all over them. But we'll see what happens. Without further ado, though, let's focus on the stats. Let's focus on the props, on the bets. Let's get into it. Let's find a couple of our favorites that we're going to put a nice ticket together that we can cry into when we lose or we can uh, pop some champagne when we win and celebrate the footy season that was. Okay, so we'll start with the Swans. We'll take a quick look at any injuries that are going to be bothering them. So Callum Mills is, uh, at this stage, he may not actually play. There was a news article going around this week about how uh, they wanted to think back to the 2012 grand final that they won, and I don't believe he played in that one. Taylor Adams, we probably won't see as well. He's been struggling to make the team. Robbie Fox as well. I would expect him to be the sub in this game. I think he's going to be one of the emergencies. We'll see if they, he gets elevated. There's also a chance could be Corey Warner as well. He's been in and out. But otherwise, I think the Swans are looking like a pretty, pretty healthy team. So that bodes well for them. Let's start with disposals. I want to start with Isaac Heaney. He's going to be the first one we look at. Now, there's two ways you can play this. I'm going to play it with Isaac Heaney 20 plus disposals because that's nice and safe. And I'm going to be building quite a lengthy ticket here, and it's also going to be pretty um, pretty gettable. There's not going to be too much risk involved, although, I mean, I'll maybe I'll let you make the decision. You can leave a comment if you think there is a lot of inherent risk in this one. But at for 20-plus touches, you can get him for $1.20. It's just a nice even number there, and he's pretty much done that every single week of the season. Uh, barring any injury or his first game back from suspension, he had 19 disposals. Other than that 19, he did actually have uh, 17 against Port Adelaide, but that game was out of hand. So um, this is where I expect big Isaac Heaney game. I think if you want, you can bet him up to 25 plus disposals. You're going to get that for around $1.85. And that's where I would probably do that as more of a standalone. He didn't have, he had 24 disposals last week. So we nearly got there. He had 30 the week before that. They're on by before that. But then 22 disposals as well was uh, in the final round of the game of the season. Sorry. So that's where I, it's just, I'm going to be interested to see how they move the pieces around here. I think it could go most ways. Usually with the Swans, we'll get about six on average, six players who will average 20 disposals or more. Uh, against the Giants, it was only four. So keep that in mind. But then against Port Adelaide, most other teams, it was six. The uh, the six that were against Port Adelaide was Isaac Heaney, 
Chad Warner, uh, looks like Nick Blakey, Jake Lloyd, Ollie Florent, and Errol Goulding were the t- people that you had to be on for that one. Uh, Matt Roberts was a bit of a letdown, but I am going to go back to Matt Roberts for my next pick. And I'm going to take him for 15 plus disposals. You don't have to bet too much with Matt Roberts, which is great to see. $1.25 for 15 plus t- touches. This is something where you can start to put these two together, maybe one more, and then you can actually start to double your money if you want to play it really, really conservatively. If you bet him up to 20 plus t- disposals, you could do that as a single because he's $2 for 20 plus disposals. So I don't actually mind that as just like a single on the side that you could play. Uh, But 15 is the safe one that we're going to do for the ticket. The other one we're going to add into this ticket is Chad Warner for 20 plus touches as well. He's pretty good value. You could also take him up to 25 if you want, but I'm just going to stick on the 20 for now. He is paying out $1.35. So that if you even just put those three together, that's pretty nice value. Um, but there's better options as well on the line side of the ball. If you want to fade Matt Roberts in this game, completely understand that. The thing with Matt Roberts is he had 15 disposals two games ago, 18 disposals in the last game to uh, Port Adelaide. So wasn't hugely needed. Uh, the Swans were really in command and they did move the ball a lot through players like Errol Goulden. Ollie Florent had a lot of the ball as well. So... Uh, Chad Warren is an interesting one, though. He had 21 disposals in the last game. He did have 27 the week before that, and then 22 as well. 33 against the Pies, uh, which was awesome to see in round 22. So he, more often than not, has been one of the targets that we've um, looked at all season long. He's been good for us. He's also been usually pretty good for a goal. And maybe that's where we'll flick to uh, anytime goal scorers here for the Swans as well, because when we've backed Isaac Heaney and Chad Warner, we've more often than not come away with the uh, the cash. So in this spot, if you want to take more of a long shot bet, you can take a look at Errol Goulden, who has had probably the most standout. So we'll move now to any time goal scorers. The two that the books have uh, put on display for us are Tom Papley for two plus goals and Joel Lamarty for two plus goals at $1.95. And to be honest, both of them are capable of it. Joel Amati as well has been playing a little bit better than he was through the actual regular season. Playoffs, uh, sorry, finals, he has been very good. Sorry, my NFL brain coming out. Uh, And Papley has more often than not when he has played, has been good for goals as well. I'm not going to look that way for two plus goals with the Swans though. I'll do it for the Lions when we talk about Joe Danaher. If I'm going to play this anyway, though, I want to look at Isaac Heaney for anytime goal scorer at $1.33. Now, here's the thing about this ticket. So if you're going to bet Isaac Heaney for uh, 20 plus disposals and anytime goal scorer at $1.33 and $1.20 respectively, or even up to 25 plus disposals for at $1.85 or whatever it is, you're actually almost better off just betting Norm Smith medal winner at, at fi- Isaac Heaney is $5 to win the Norm Smith, where if he's going to have 25 plus disposals, if he's going to kick a goal, you may as well, you're basically putting those two tickets together. You may as well actually just go all in on that prop bet, uh, which I probably prefer. Even if you wanted to do like Isaac Heaney for two plus goals, which is $2.70 and 25 plus disposals, which is going to be at about $1.80. Then again, you could probably just parlay that into a uh, Norm Smith winner for Isaac Heaney, and that's probably going to come up better for you anyway. So, so that's just food for thought on that one. Uh, if I was going to play it for two plus goal scorers, I actually might go. So here's how I'd go: I'd actually go Joel Lamarty for the two goals potentially. I think this could be a good spot for him just because I'm on the Swans to win this game. Errol Goulding for a long shot kick as well. Actually, kind of don't mind that. He's had 15 goals from 35 shots a goal on the season. And for any time goal scorer, you can get him at $2.25. So that's another pretty good single long shot bet that you could probably sprinkle on the side as well. But I'm, I think that that's the way I'm going to play this one for the Swans. I want to play it through Isaac Heaney for the disposals. I want to play it through Chad Warner as well for disposals. Isaac Heaney for goal. Uh, even Isaac Heaney for Norm Smith, I'm into if you want to start building a bit more of a long shot ticket. And we might even put Matt Roberts on the side as well as a potential that we'll look at. All right, let's take a look at the Brisbane Lions now, their team. So as we mentioned at the top of the show, they're going to be without Oscar McInerney. And that's probably going to create a few problems for them in the midfield just because uh, Darcy Fort, sorry, and the hitouts, because Darcy Fort, he's just really not of that caliber that Oscar McInerney has been playing this year. And Oscar McInerney has been having a really fantastic season. He did break his collarbone. 
in the last game or fractured it potentially. I don't, unless they're going to shoot him up with a lot of drugs, I don't anticipate him playing in this one. Here's the players who I want to move my ticket through this game through. So we're going to take a look at Will Ashcroft, number one player that we love, for 20 plus touches. He has been fantastic since they moved into the midfield. He's basically been getting 20 plus touches every single week. He had 22 last week against the Cats, 27 against the Giants. He was the leading disposal getter in that game. Brisbane Lions are usually good for about six players per game to get 20 plus touches. Well, uh, the week before last against the Giants, they had just the five. Similarly with the Blues, but they did have six against the Bombers, but then five against the Pies as well. Last week against the Cats, Lions had nine players get at least 20 plus touches. It was Will Ashcroft, Lockie Neal, Dane Zorko, Josh Dunkley, Darcy Wilmot, Jared Berry, Hugh McCluggage, Noah Ainsworth, and Ryan Lester of all players. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Ryan Lester had, I'm having a look, three other games during the season in which he got 20 plus touches as well, as did players like Connor McKenna had two games where he got 20 plus touches. So they do tend to come and go depending on injuries. But I think outside of Oscar McInerney, we're going to see a full star start of the lineup for this one. Will Ashcroft, Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko are all the ways going to play this. I understand Hugh McCluggage just had a really good season. Uh, I understand Jared Berry's had a pretty good season as well and Darcy Wilmot too, but they're a bit more boom and bust than I want to uh, put together. I want to put something a bit more safe together. So if you feel keen, you can put Hugh McCluggage into your lineup as well for the 20 plus touches. But the main players that I'm going to be looking at are just on the side. Look, I'm going to put in Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko into this ticket just to have them there. They, they don't serve any other purpose. And I dare I say, I feel like they're fail proof outside of injury. Understand Lockie Neal had 19 disposals in the game against the Giants. Bit of a weird game that they came back and won. Uh, Dane Zorko, more often than not, has been elite. So if you're going to be smart about it, you probably want to play it up to 25, which you can do with uh, Dane Zorko. I definitely recommend. He's been basically doing that every single week. Lucky Neil, little, tiny little bit more risky but, and uh, a little bit less value as well at $1.50 for 25 plus touches. Humor Cluggage is where it starts to fall off a little bit. He had two games where he was 24 disposals in the weeks gone by. But, uh, and I understand that that just falls a little bit under the radar. So, you know, it could be a disposal here or there that, that lost that one for them. Um, and Will Ashcroft, I'm not going to bet up to 25 plus touches. If he did, it would be at a $2.40. I'm not going to say that that's going to happen. If you want some really, really good value on 20 plus touches, Jared Berry, I actually do like that one. That's $1.80. So that's uh, his line is sitting right around there. He must be at about 20 and a half or 21 and a half uh, over under. So I do like Jared Berry as well as a bit more of a long shot there. If we take a look at anytime goal scorers for the Brisbane Lions, so we have basically every single week, similar with Jeremy Cameron kicking two plus goals, we've been doing Joe Danaher two plus goals. Didn't kick any goals last week. Now, I know what you're thinking. Does that mean that he's not going to kick any goals this week? No. We are massive advocates for positive regression, and I can see in this spot, this is great for this game. This means that he's more than likely going to kick more goals in this game. He had four the week before against the Giants. He had two the week before that against the Blues. So he has been absolute money. They Games were mostly at the Gabba except for last week at the MCG, but he's back again. And I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem for him. So uh, $1.55 for two plus goals. I'm really into it. Charlie Cameron for two plus goals is $1.85. You could play that into it or it's $1.15 for just the single. You could add to the single because he is pretty much guaranteed a goal every single week. Bit more of a long shot if you want to start to go down the list. I talked about him briefly at the start of the show, but Kai Lohman has been absolutely fantastic and he's kicked a goal in pretty much every single game that he's when he's as soon as he started to really come alive in the second half of the season. More often than not, he can kick two goals. He could even kick three. So um, I don't think that the spotlight is too big for him. I think he's a fantastic player. Dare I say, as a Geelong supporter, I think he almost probably should could have run one rising star had the season gone into the finals and we've seen the way he's been playing. So $1.40 for any time goal scorer. That one makes a lot of sense to me as well. Um, the other one that's a bit silly is a bit of a long shot, but I actually kind of don't mind it. It's Lockie Neal, anytime goal scorer. That's paying $3. So terrible odds, but Lockie Neal actually hasn't been too bad in front of goals. He's had 13 goals from 24 shots at goal. So 
with that in mind, he uh, over the back half of the season when Brisbane was starting to play a bit better, he was actually getting a couple of score involvements for a, a time there. Don't expect that to always tick up. But, you know, when we're talking about these long shot bets of, you know, Norm Smith winner, uh, kicking a goal from the half back line, play, th- things like that. This is where I'm kind of into this kind of thing. But you know what? I'm actually going to stick on the Norm Smith. Um, the only way I can see a Brisbane Lions player winning the Norm Smith, obviously, if they win the game, could be Lock and, Lucky Neil. I actually don't mind. As a long shot bet, Dane Zorko at $13 to win the Norm Smith. So basically, you, you're banking on Lions winning the game. Um, Zorko, who's been playing better than Lucky Neil, dare I say, through the finals as well, uh, could be there. Uh, there's other names like Cam Rainer's at $21. Cam Rainer, who comes alive in grand finals and uh, final series. Will Ashcroft, $26 for Will Ashcroft. That also looks kind of a little bit enticing as well. But I'm happy with the way we're playing this. I'm happy with the ticket. I'm also, I've added Sydney Swans minus four and a half. And I know that this is a prop betting show and we always recommend not to do that because it is, uh, it's a lot more difficult when you're trying to predict what the entire team is going to do. But I'm adding that one in. So I'm going, I'm going all in on this ticket. Uh, There's a lot of values to be had. There's a lot of really interesting ways to play this. Let me know what your favorite ways to play this as well are in the comments below. I would love to know who you're really on top of, uh, who you're really into this uh, for the grand final as well. That's going to do it. That's it. We're done. That's the footy. That's season 2024 of the footy done and dusted. Our first season on Prop Nation doing uh, doing the footy. And I think it was fun. I think it was a really, really great success. We're definitely going to bring it back next season. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple of like off-season videos as well, similar to what Sully and I did with our team previews for the NFL. I want to do that kind of series for the AFL as well going into next season and uh, we'll have more models. We'll have more ways that I want to kind of build on what we've started. It was just the first season. We did have a lot of hits. Maybe I'll start keeping even a record. I mean, we throw around so many different ideas and props. And that's the kind of really the point of the show. It's more to get an idea of props and think out loud and look at the model and look at what all the numbers and statistics are telling us. And then making a pick from there. We'll get a discourse server going as well because I'd love to um, have a bit more conversation. If you've seen, I've also been posting lately to Reddit, all our picks as well. A lot of people start to follow us on Reddit, which is really cool to see. A lot of people have been subscribing to our YouTube show, uh, subscribing to us on Apple and Spotify has been fantastic. I super, super appreciate everyone who's been involved uh, in the footy season. It's been fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed it. And I'm excited to bring it back next season. We'll probably do a bit, couple of live videos as well for grand final day. So stick around for that. But until then, enjoy the game. Enjoy the off season. Get some rest. We'll see you through the off season here and there. But we're going to keep doing the NFL as well. NFL season goes long. Goes very, very long. Um, so looking forward to that as well. Until then, bye for now. Don't let the game play you. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. In Australia, phone 1-800-858-858 for free and confidential support. In Canada, learn about safer play at Know the Risks from the Responsible Gambling Council at knowtherisks.ca. In America, must be 21 or older and present in Arizona. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342. Colorado, gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Connecticut, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia, call one 800 Gambler. In Indiana, gambling problem, call 1 800 9 with it. Kansas, gambling problem, getting help is your best bet. Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1 877 770 stop. In Massachusetts, call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support. Play it smart from the start or call 1 800 GAM 1234. In Michigan, gambling problem, call 1 800 270 7117 for confidential help. In New York, for help with a gambling problem, call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY. Tennessee, gambling problem, Call Tennessee Redline 1 800 889 9789. Wyoming gambling problem call 1 800 522 4700. Prop Nation betting show is for entertainment purposes only and should in no way be considered financial advice.